These are my disclosures. Musculoskeletal oncologists treat infections from tumor reconstruction, revision joint replacement, primary infections, and trauma. Their additional challenges include dealing with the secondary process of cancer, patients who are immunosuppressed, and the volume of tissue and bone loss. Here's the common uh, complication types for endoprosthetic uh, reconstruction in oncology. These include uh, endoprosthetic and allografts. And as you can see here, a type 4 complication, which is a deep infection, uh, can go up to 8 to 13 percent of cases. The surgical pr principles must be maintained. Often the problem is not obvious and diagnosis is crucial. A biopsy and culture are required due to the fact that in aseptic loosening cases only a one-stage surgery is required. With infection or recurrent tumor, a two-stage surgery, IV antibiotics, wide resection, and possibly chemotherapy are required. Patient factors include the medical comorbidities of cardiac disease, obesity, and diabetes. Oncologic factors include adjuvant treatment, the presence of metastatic disease. The surgical and medical team must be well trained, and oftentimes no reconstruction or amputation is the only option. In our practice, these are the most common pathogens. Staph coag positive at 36%, coag negative at 24%, and polymicrobial organisms make up up to 20% of the cases. Anatomic factors include the region, the volume, and the soft tissue loss. The volume of bone loss is important for reconstructability and stability. Soft tissue envelope may require flaps, wound management, and the use of vacs, and distal femoral proximal tibial replacement combinations have the highest risk of failure. The current stage options include debridement and component exchange, and these are performed in patients with early infections of low virulence and when there's medical comorbidities involved. An explant can be performed in medically stable patients with late infections when there's a virulent polymicrobial organism, bone loss is expected, and limb stability is necessary. Following the explant, a spacer can be performed, a reimplantation can be performed, or you can opt for no reconstruction. In cases where a spacer is decided, it must have a stable construct. Patients having reimplantation must have a clean surgical bed and oftentimes reimplantation is the only option when spacer options are limited. No reconstruction is performed in grossly contaminated surgical beds or in patients that will not tolerate another procedure. The current success for endoprosthetic infections of knee megaprosthetics include the DARE operation of less than 10%. The one stage in selected cases has a 53% success rate and a two-stage, which is standard, has a 72% success rate. All these include intravenous antibiotics for a minimum of six weeks, followed by oral antibiotics for six weeks, possibly even chronic suppression. Just a note about knee spacers. In non-oncologic or adult reconstructive cases, as you can see here, there's a much smaller bone gap, whereas in oncologic cases, the gap is much larger. In non-oncologic cases, weight-bearing endoprosthetic arth arthrodesis constructs are possible, where in oncologic cases, a more creative reconstruction is required. The basic principles of debridement and explant include the radical debridement of all granulation tissue, metal, plastic, and polymethylmethacrylate with ultrasonic cement removal instruments and a high-speed burr, then with flexible reamers and curettes. The ob ideal objective is a clean surgical bed. As you can see here, these are the two bone ends. And the next step is a decision as to whether or not reimplantation or 
a spacer insertion is required. With a spacer, standard intermedullary nails can be used connected together with either two millimeter cables or a combination of screws and wires. As you can see here, 4.5 millimeter screws and nuts. Antibiotics are prepared with the standard tobramycin polymethyl methacrylate with vancomycin and methylene blue to identify the cement contrast to bone. This is built up between the two bone ends. Here's an example of a femoral shaft lesion in a four-year-old patient with an undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma post-radiation that had a fracture and a deep infection with staph aureus. This was treated with a two-stage resection debridement with IM nail and antibiotic spacer, followed by reimplantation with an intercalary endoprosthetic. Here are two cases, uh, one distal femur, 11-year-old uh, osteogenic sarcoma with staph aureus, and a 65-year-old female with a grade two chondrosarcoma staph aureus. These were left with a very short bone segment. The osteogenic sarcoma patient was treated with a uh, IM nail with a antibiotic spacer, the 65-year-old female was treated with two long IM nails and a polymethyl methacrylate spacer. The 11-year-old was then converted to a compress type of stem, proximally, and our adult patient was treated with a long stem distal femoral proximal tibia replacement. Here's a patient with an expandable total femur replacement expanded and then got infected. This was treated with a two-stage total femur endoprosthetic uh, construct with antibiotic cement and then reinserted with a permanent implant with antibiotic cement. The current practice is to do this as a one-stage procedure. Here's Here's the results of one of our recent uh, publications of two-stage knee reimplantation uh, showing a reimplantation rate of 86% and an MSTS score of 21.6 out of 30. As you can see, there was a fair number of polymicrobial organisms. Here's our two-stage hip data, which is uh, not uh, quite as uh, successful, but this had a higher percentage of polyorganisms. The review of the literature shows similar results, and you can see here all these studies have a very similar success rate. Thank you very much for your attention.